When you're considering buying an e-bike, it can be pretty overwhelming, especially if it's your first e-bike. So this video is gonna take all of the stress out of the decision-making process and hopefully make it a fun experience for you. We'll be able to narrow it down pretty quickly, depending on what you wanna use your e-bike for, be it food delivery, mountain biking, commuting to work, dropping the kids off at school. There are just so many use cases these days. You've probably noticed the price varies hugely between e-bikes, but the good news is you probably don't even need half of the features and specs on the real expensive ones. G'day everybody, my name's Andy and welcome to the channel. I had a bit of a late night last night, so I thought today would be a good day just to sit down and have a chat about buying your first e-bike. And these are the seven things you'll need to know or decide before you make your purchase. So kicking things off is the big one and it's probably going to have an effect on all of your other answers, so we need to get this sorted straight away. What are you going to be using your e-bike for? If you want it for full-time food delivery, for example, eight-hour shifts, then battery is everything and that that should be your main priority when you're deciding what type of bike you're looking for. You don't need a full suspension mountain bike. You may not even really care what it looks like. You just need a good battery that's going to last the distance so you can earn some money. If you only want it for part-time food deliveries, like a side hustle, bit of money on the side, say three, four hour shifts every now and then, then you can probably have any of the other bikes that we're going to talk about today and you don't necessarily need one with a huge battery. If you're just looking for an e-bike for commuting to work, then you probably just want a bike that looks pretty much like like a normal bike except it's got a motor and a battery on it and the good news is these are often very affordable um, you don't need all the bells and whistles um, you don't need a particularly huge battery unless you work far away so that's something you'll have to do um, you'll have to do the calculations for work out how big a range you need when you're shopping and make sure that the bike will cover that range we're going to talk about that a little bit later on as well because the range that manufacturers say their bike will do isn't always correct if you think you'll need to be getting your e-bike on a train or even in the back of your car, then you may lean towards a folding e-bike. And if you're looking for an electric mountain bike, then just be warned that you may have to be spending quite a bit of money to get one that you're gonna feel confident on flying down a mountain. But just on that, if by mountain bike, you just mean a bike that's capable of going on like gravel paths across grass, like uh, forest trails, for example, rather than, you know, like, jumping over ditches and tree roots and things like that, then you might not need a full suspension mountain bike. You just need a sturdy frame, front suspension maybe, and reliable battery and good components that are gonna last and not let you down. So this is what I'm saying. It's very tempting to just go out and buy like sort of the best one that money can buy. And if you turn up at a shop without a sort of set idea in your head, you might find that they, uh, they very easily persuade you to buy something, to buy a bike that uh, you might not necessarily need. For example, you might not need a mid-drive motor, you might just be okay with a hub drive motor. And if you don't know the difference between the two, then fear not, because I'm going to explain that in a minute, so stay tuned. But first we need to talk about battery. I've already mentioned it a few times, so that's gonna be the next big thing you need to know or decide. How big a battery do you actually need? Um, you may not know this, you may know this already, but the battery is actually one of the most expensive components on most e-bikes. So if you go and buy a, a battery that's way bigger than what you need, you're going to be shelling out a lot more cash that's sort of unnecessary because you'll never even use that. You know, it's fine to go and use it for what you need it for and then come home and charge it. You don't need the battery to be there lasting for many trips, you know. One trip's enough, come home, charge it, done. So work out how far a range you'll need and don't really need to go too much over that because at the end of the day, if your battery does run out on the odd occasion, you can still just pedal the rest of the way. Buying a battery much bigger than you need is gonna cost you more and also like the big batteries are big and heavy and they're gonna weigh your bike down. Like even the top end mountain bikes don't even have a particularly massive battery because keeping the weight down on them is important. But yeah, if you are doing the full-time delivery shifts, that I mentioned earlier, eight hour, nine hour, 10 hour shifts, then you are gonna need one of those batteries and you've probably seen them on the food delivery bikes. They're literally just like big, massive cubes and that's what you're gonna to need to last the distance. And like I said earlier, the range that manufacturers claim their bikes will do on their websites or whatever you might see, it says up to 100 kilometers per charge. That's usually pretty optimistic, right? That usually means you're riding sensibly on a low assistance level. Um, and if you're riding on like the highest assistance level, you're, ne you're not going to get 
the range that they're claiming they are. So it's important to look at the size of the battery. Now this is usually measured in amp hours or watt hours. The only real sort of way you're gonna work out what's good is by comparing bikes with each other. So, you know, if you're looking at two bikes that are pretty much identical in all other ways, but one's got a, a bigger battery in terms of amp hours, then you know that that's probably gonna last longer. Again, there's other factors that come into it, such as weight of the bike, you know, and as I said, the way you ride it and all things like that. But all things being equal, the size of the battery is the biggest indicator. So you'll see it, it says amp hours, for example, 10 amp hours, 20 amp hours. Uh, sometimes it will say watt hours, and there's actually an easy calculation you can do to convert that. So watt hours is basically amp hours times voltage. So for example, if you've got a 10 amp hour battery, and it's 36 volt, that's 360 watt hours, and then you can reverse it back. So if you need to do that maths to compare two different bikes, then that's the sum you need to do. By the way, if you're finding this video useful so far, then please hit subscribe. Next up, battery quality. Um, if you can, I recommend buying batteries, well, obviously lithium for a start, which pretty much all of them are these days. So lithium battery, if you can, look for either Panasonic, Samsung or LG, they're generally gonna be the safest and last the longest. Um, batteries will over time lose their capacity. So after a couple of years, you might find that your battery is just not lasting as long as it used to. Exactly the same as your phone, right? After a few years, you know, you won't get through the whole day on one charge anymore. So it's exactly the same thing. Basically, that's gonna come down to price. Um, there's no advantage of having a cheaper battery other than the fact it's just gonna be cheaper. So what type of motor do you want? This is probably something which I know I found quite confusing when I first started looking at e-bikes. So to run it through it briefly, you've basically got the mid drive where the motor sits on the bottom of the frame um, and it turns the crank set, which then in turn turns the chain and then your cassette at the back and everything like that. So that's gonna feel the most natural and that's gonna make use of the gears that your bike already has. Um, what you're quite common seeing, I think this is probably the most common type, is the rear hub, and that's where the motor sits in the middle of the back wheel. Basically, your pedal, there's little magnets on uh, your drivetrain that then tell your battery, hey, we're moving, send power back to the rear hub motor, and then that powers like that. Most of them are like that. I mean, I don't really think there's a problem with that. Mid drives will feel a bit more natural, but there's nothing wrong with hub drives, um, rear hub drives. You can also get front hub drives. To be honest, these are quite rare. I mean, it, uh, I, I don't think that would feel that good. Like, I don't know, you're pedaling with the back, but the front wheel is powered by a motor. I don't know, each to their own. I've never actually ridden a front, a front hub motor, so I can't really comment. Generally, mid drives are preferred, but they cost more and when I say cost more, they cost a lot more. Like the, the identical bike, right? But a mid drive is probably gonna cost at least a thousand bucks more than the rear hub drive version of it. So the next thing you need to know is how much service slash warranty do you want with your e-bike? Um, this is very subjective. Some of you may not care, you may not want any if you're quite handy at fixing things or and you're confident like buying replacement parts and things like that and fixing it yourself, then you probably don't care about warranty, warranty and included sort of bike services with your purchase. If you're not particularly mechanically minded, then that's something that you will probably be more interested in. For example, if you go into a shop, um, like a, a trusted brand name bike shop, they're probably gonna give you sort of one year free service or whatever, or your first service free. They'll give you a warranty on the bike, on the parts, you know, maybe like a lifetime warranty on the frame and then a year or two on the components. So something like that's gonna be very valuable for you, give you peace of mind. You will notice that like if you look online, you'll see some e-bikes that are a lot cheaper than what you can get from the shops. Um, they generally just get shipped direct from China straight to you. Um, a lot of them are fine, absolutely nothing wrong with them, but obviously they will, if anything goes wrong with them, then you can't just pop to your local shop and get them serviced or anything like that. Um, if you need to replace parts, are you gonna struggle there? That's sort of something you need to think about before you make that purchase. Like I said, though, nothing wrong with them. Well, some of them, some of them are all right. You will just need to do a bit more research about them, um, read some reviews and things like that. But yeah, you're very unlikely to be able to get help 
from the person you bought them from if anything goes wrong with them. And the next question, this is probably one which you may not have thought of before because again, this is mainly kind of come down to how much you want to spend and that's the type of sensor. So what type of sensor do you want? The two types that we mainly see are a, what's called a rotation sensor, like sort of when you pedal, the magnets fly past the sensor and then that tells you how much power or tells your battery and controller how much power to send to the motor and um, literally based on how fast that's moving. There's another type that's called a torque sensor um, and that actually measures like how hard you're pedaling. So for example, if you're going uphill, it will measure the tension and it will go, well, we need to give more power. So, it'll, so that's better, right? Like the magnets and that are fine most of the times. The only times I feel that they are lacking is if you accidentally are going up a hill and you're in too high a gear, you can't turn it enough to get the power to your motor. But if, you're, if you have like a torque sensor, it will tell how much torque is on the drivetrain and it'll send that extra boost to it. But yeah, and so like I say, yeah, the, the torque sensors probably are better, but they cost a lot more. So depending on what sort of price range you're looking at, you might not even come across or be given that option. Oh, I am tired. I was like watching the football last night. Um, if you don't know, by the way, I'm in Australia and um, yes, yeah, so obviously the Premier League is on at like middle of the night all the time and then I always say I'm not going to watch it and then I end up watching it and then sort of regretting it the next morning. But anyway, so the final question you need to ask yourself is what power do you need? I'm going to make this very simple for you and it basically comes down to whether you want your bike to be road legal or not. So in Australia, um, in nearly all states, the maximum you're allowed to be road legal is 250 watt motor, okay? So New South Wales is 500 watt, but all other states is 250 watt. And so if you want your bike to be road legal, that's taken the decision out of it for you, just get a 250 watt motor. You've probably seen that you can get bigger motors out there. They're not road legal, but you do you. If you're happy having a bike that's not road legal and what you do with it is your business, just don't be an idiot on it. Also, you might be thinking, do you need a throttle bike or a pedal assist bike? Um, in Australia, this decision again has been made easy for you because all bikes have to be pedal assisted basically. Um, again, you will see some bikes that are throttle assisted. They're not road legal, but some people do it. Do with that information what you will. Now we've spoken a lot about batteries today, um, but there is actually a way you can get more range out of your batteries, up to 50% more kilometers out of your battery. And this video here goes all over the strategies and tactics for that. It doesn't cost anything extra. If you wanna know more about e-bike laws, like I touched on earlier, such as the max wattage motor you're allowed and the top speeds, and then this video is the one for you. I hope today helped. Apologies, I was lagging a bit. I do really appreciate you watching though, so thanks for that. And you should definitely consider subscribing because there's plenty more e-bike news, reviews, and tips coming soon.